Greetings in the name of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile I, Selassie the First. He is the Father of Jesus Christ. And we would like to speak about who was the first person who called His Majesty the Father of Jesus Christ. Because when we say Primus St. Croix is the Christ, what we mean by that is He is the one who kept us in the name of the Father. So there was other Rastas before Primus, many other Rastas, beginning with the original Leonard Howell. Now if you read Leonard Howell's book, if you read the Primus Key, you will see that his teachings uh, consider His Majesty to be King Alpha and Empress Omenin as, as Queen Omega. Right, so the concept, when you hear the concept, King Alpha, Queen Omega, that's how, that's his teachings, you can read that in his book. And you also have the Bingi, the Bingi order. Now, Naya Bingi really does not have a set doctrine, but within Bingi, the common theme is to consider His Majesty Christ in His kingly character. And you have 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, 12 tribes of Israel also does not have a set doctrine. But within their doctrine, they consider Haile Selassie to be uh, a servant, a servant of Christ, and they, and they worship Jesus Christ. Um, and then you have the uh, Bobo Shanti order. Now, when it comes to us, when it comes to us who follow Primus St. Croix, um, a lot of people compare what we are saying to Bobo Shanti because uh, they say that since we are since we are calling Primus St. Croix to Christ that is similar to Bobo Shanti when they call Charles Edwards to Christ however what we are saying and what Bobo Shanti is saying is is very very different very different. Now I know that a lot of Rasta, you know, take offense to what we are saying and what we're doing. But in all actuality, we have nothing but love for all of our Rasta brothers and sisters. Um, but the Word of God is without respect of person. So when someone is wrong, they're wrong. And uh, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, we should fight over that. You know, if, if you're wrong, that's something that uh, you should correct. Then constructive criticism is actually a good thing. And it said that God chastised his sons. So Bobo Shanti, when they, when they say that Charles Edwards is Christ, they're calling him God. So Bobo Shanti uh, considers the Trinity to be prophet, priest, and king, three in one. And, and one God in all three of them. So they consider all three of these people, uh, Charles Edwards, Haile Selassie, and Marcus Garvey, all to be God. Uh, prophet God, priest God, king is God. Garvey, Edwards, Haile Selassie. Um, when we say Primus is the Christ, we are not saying that Primus is God at all. When we say Primus St. Croix is Jesus Christ, we are saying that he is a prophet. We are saying that he is the messenger of God who will give you the truth about God, who kept us in the name of the Father. So that is one huge difference between um, what we are saying and Bobo. Another big difference between what we are saying and Bobo is the concept of the Father. You see... Bobo considered his majesty to be God, just like they considered Edwards to be God, just like they considered Marcus Garvey to be God. Um, so Bobo considers his majesty to be God, but Bobo never, consi ne never considered and never declared Haile Selassie to be the father of Jesus Christ. Because Bobo, within a Bobo concept of declaring Charles Edwards as Christ, they have included, uh, just like everyone includes everyone who follows the Roman Ecumenical Councils, 
everyone includes Christ within the concept of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So when Bobo is calling Edwards Christ, they are calling him the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There, there has been no declaration from Bobo Shanti of saying that um, His Majesty is the Father and Bob and, 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 and Edwards is the Son. There is no declaration of that. Any declarations from Bobo Shanti or any other order saying that His Majesty is the Father and that Edwards is the Son all these declarations come after Primus St. Croix. There is no such thing as that happening before Primus St. Croix. Before Primus gave his testimony, right? Before the year 2000, before he loosed the seals, which is the knowledge. Before he unlocked the knowledge, there has been no declarations of Bobo Shanti declaring Haile Selassie as the father and and uh, Charles Edwards as the son. All of this comes after. After they hear what we say, after they heard what Primus said, after they heard our testimony and our message, they all want to pick apart our message. They all want to take the things that they like from it. They all want to call us wrong, but they want to pick apart our message and the things that they like and want to incorporate it into their doctrine. Well, it's not how it works. You see, you're going to have to give the Bredgen Primus his credit. He is the first person. He's the one who kept us in the name of the Father. He is the one who said Haile Selassie is the Father of Jesus Christ. No one did that before him. So all of these different orders are popping up like the Bob Marley thing now where uh, they're trying to say that uh, His Majesty is the Father and Bob Marley is the Son. All of these Things that are popping up after Primus and with Bobo now trying to change the message and trying to say that they was the first ones who called his majesty the father and 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 Edwards the son all of these things come after Primus you see Primus testimony is actually recorded it is recorded in time you 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 can lie to people, but one thing you cannot do is rewind time. You're not going to be able to go back in time in the 50s and the 60s when, when, when the Bredgens in Jamaica was doing a thing and setting up their camps. You're not going to be able to go back there to the Howellites, to Bobo Hill, and somehow find manuscripts where it says that. Because they actually wrote down and it's recorded what their testimony is. There's videos of them. There's newspaper articles of them. It's their own books, their own testimonies. You can hear it for yourself. Howell never, never called His Majesty the Father. Bobo Shanti never called His Majesty the Father. Bingy never called His Majesty the Father. Twelve tribes never called His Majesty the Father. That comes from Primus St. Croix. So if you want to say that Haile Selassie is the father of Jesus Christ, you are taking the testimony of Primus St. Croix, which is fine. Go ahead and take it. But if you're going to take it, you're going to have to take the whole thing. You can't have the father without the son because they are one in agreement, not the same person, which is what all of them believed before Primus explained the separation of the father and the son. Okay, if you're going to say his majesty is the father of Jesus Christ, you're going to then have to say that Primus St. Croix is the Christ because that testimony comes from the brethren. So, let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. A common scripture that uh, people... Um, the Rastas, we all uh, attribute this to His Majesty, and this is correct. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 is about His Majesty because it talks about the everlasting Father, and His Majesty is that. It says, For un unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 is talking about His Majesty, the Everlasting Father, the Mighty God, the One God, upon the throne of David, and His kingdom is forever. And that is, that is talking about, that is talking about the understanding. You see, because His Majesty has a government that He established on earth, just like the scripture says, that the government shall be upon His shoulder. That he will establish this. That God will establish his government on earth. But that government. His majesty's government. When he reigned from 1930 to 1974. That government in of itself. Is not the whole entire. Is not the fullness of the kingdom of heaven. And here's what I mean by that. His majesty is the kingdom of heaven. Haile Selassie is the kingdom of heaven. But in order to have the fullness of his majesty, that only comes from Christ. Because he's the mediator between God and man. Now if you look at history, all of the Ethiopians who was a part of his majesty's government from 1930 to 1974, like his prime minister... Like all of his other ministers and all of the people who was there in Addis Ababa when his majesty was governing, none of them considered him to be God. And none of them looked at him as God and worshipped him as, as God. They just seen him as the greatest leader and the greatest man they, that, has, that they have ever seen. You know, that's all it was. You know, that he was this exceptional man who was right about everything. Who, you know, had a dignity and, and, and aura that, uh, every, that astounded the world. The whole world bowed down to him. He was the highest dignitary on the planet. He unified all of Africa. He had all his achievements, but they did not see him as God. And that was because of their religion. Their religious understanding led them to look at... Uh, you know things differently so they looked uh, they looked to the idol you know of Jesus Christ and their ancient religion you know as God and they they did not see the kingdom manifest on earth so his government from 1930 to 1974 is not the entire fullness of the kingdom in order to have the fullness of the kingdom that only comes through Christ Christ is the one who's going to give you the fullness of the kingdom, right? So that's why it says in Revelations when Christ says to him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. You see, so these thrones and this kingdom, his majesty's kingdom and Christ the king of the Jews. The Jews is those people who know God, because in Israel is God is is God is God found, right? The Israel, uh, our King, our God, right? So Israel, the God of Israel, is a true and living God, and and Christ is the King of the Jews, meaning the understanding. So that's what Christ is saying when He says, "You, I will grant you to sit with me in my throne." So Christ is talking about the gospel that you will sit. In his throne, meaning the gospel, just like he has sat down in his father's throne. So he has sat in his father's throne, meaning that he accepts God for who he is. So it's a spiritual understanding which did not come by Haile Selassie's prime minister and his minister of agriculture and, and all of his other ministers. Those, are, those people did great works. They are not the ones who's declaring that his majesty is the father of Jesus Christ. They're not declaring the kingdom of heaven has manifest on earth and showing you God in the flesh. You see, they, they're still in the ancient religion. The Ethiopians follow the ancient tradition that comes from the council of Nicaea. Right? So they follow, they're under, they're under the Roman ecumenical order. Right, and they follow that 
the uh, Catholic uh, interpretation of Jesus Christ, right? But Christ, the true Christ who's going to show us God and is going to allow us to sit in the kingdom of heaven, he's the one who's going to keep us in the name of the Father and show us God the Father. And that is His Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I. So when we enter into that kingdom, Christ's kingdom is a spiritual understanding. You see, that's what that's what that's what Primus has has allowed us to inherit. It's the spiritual understanding. That's what makes him the Christ. He gave us the truth. So now we have the truth and know that his majesty is the father of Jesus Christ. And that did not come from any other Rasta. So there was a lot of Rastas who declared that his majesty is God. But none of them declared it properly because his majesty is not um, King Alpha and Empress Menon is not uh, Queen Omega. God is Alpha and Omega, right? His Majesty is not um, a, a follower. His Majesty does not worship Jesus Christ. And there's no quote of His Majesty saying that He worships Jesus Christ. He said to follow Jesus Christ, right? And that's again because the Father and the Son are one. Right, so we must follow Christ. There's no quote where His Majesty worship, say He worships Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ is God. Right, and, but that's what these past Rastas were saying. His Majesty is His Majesty Haile Selassie and Garvey and this man Charles Edwards are not all the same. I mean, uh, they are not all the same one God. That's like uh, polytheism. That's henotheism. That's paganism. Three men. Three men. Three separate men are all the same one God. I mean, that's not that's not the teachings of the Bible. And, and, and Bob Marley, you know, they saying that Bob Marley is the son and his majesty is the father. I mean, this is a total ripoff. Of Primus, you see, and this shows how ignorant they are because they did not read our testimony. They just heard little things and bits and pieces of us saying that Primus is the Christ, but they're not seeing that we are showing it through the scriptures. There's no scripture to uh, justify Bob Marley as uh, you know Christ. You know, before they were saying that Bob Marley is Joseph because he has. 12 children now now he's Christ I guess the 12 children and now the 12 disciples I mean this is just uh, you know you, you're not you can't play around with the Word of God I mean when we say promises to Christ we talking about prophecy you know we're talking about 70 years prophecy right we're talking about the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil we're saying that Primus kept us in the name of the Father, and that is history. You cannot rewind time. You can say all you want, you can argue and fuss all you want. You cannot rewind time and, and show that any one of y'all was saying that His Majesty is the Father of Christ before Primus. That is Primus St. Croix's testimony. None of them. A Buna Fox with the church. He teaches the same thing as the uh, as the Roman Ecumenical Councils of, you know, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All of that is one to to them. That they are all the same. They all they all follow that Roman order. But Primus understood the te the separation. You see, look at Second Second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, it said, Blessed be God, even a Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. You see, God is the Father. God is the Father, not the Son. He is the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is God. God is the Father. And, 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 and we're going to have to understand that. And if you want to accept that testimony, then you're going to have to accept the fullness, the Father and the Son, the separation that the Father alone is God and the Son is the one who kept, kept us in the name of God and gave us the truth 
about the Father, the truth about the Bible, the truth on the Word of God. That was Primus who gave the, the correct testimony. And the scripture said that you're going to have to respect that. And you're going to have to honor the Son even as you honor the Father. So in Ephesians, Ephesians 1 verse 17, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of Jesus Christ, because even in, even in Revelation 3.12, Jesus said that he will tell you the name of his God. So if Jesus has a God, that means that Jesus is not God, right? In Ephesians 1.17, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the gift of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Hailei, Selassiad first. That wisdom, that knowledge in the revelation of him that comes from the brethren. That's, that's, that comes from the brethren. The brethren gives you that wisdom. Primus St. Croix. He's the one who, who loose seals. That's the wisdom. That's the knowledge. That's the revelation. You see, only the brethren did that. So a lot, all of these other rosters have been, you know, going through the scriptures. And that's great. Because if that is sincere, if you are sincere in going through the scriptures and, and having that love for the word and having that love for his majesty. If that if that is sincere, then you would love what Primus is saying. You see, we're we're basically here to correct, which is to help. You know, we're here to help our Rasta brothers and sisters. Give you the truth. You know, stop stop following the Roman ecumenical councils like Fox and 12 tribes is doing. Stop stop following that because that is idolatry. Stop following, you know, this uh, polytheistic view that three different men are all God because that is ignorance. That doesn't make any sense at all, you know, and, 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 and His Majesty is the greatest human being that walked on the planet. He has no equal. He is the most high. He is the highest. So if he's the highest, he has no equal. No one can be compared to him. So we're, we're trying to give our brothers and sisters the truth. So there's no reason to fight us. The brethren, the brethren primus was trying to help out. You know, but all of them want to fight and they want to crucify. They want to try to kill the brethren. They want to try to kill his message. But it's not possible for you to do that. Because God, when it said God rose up Jesus Christ, that means he's justified. So, you know, you're going to have to be aware of what you're fighting against. So, in John 1, verse 18, it says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. When it says no man has seen God at any time, it said no one understood it correctly, which is the same parable of Revelation 5. When it said who is worthy to take the book out of the, out of the hand of him who sits on the throne, and no one was found worthy, only Christ. You see, Christ is the one who is worthy, the only one who can declare God. That means correctly. So all of these other rosters was again preaching but they wasn't preaching correctly. They was preaching polytheistic ideas. They was preaching according to the Roman teachings, which is all idolatry. And that shows that they have not seen God, which means they did not understand God. They are saying highly Selassie, Howell and all the rest of them been saying highly Selassie, but none of them, but none of them are saying it correctly. You see? None of, them, none of them are preaching the word correctly. So when you look at John 17, John 17 verse 6, it says, Christ again, Christ, I have manifested thy name. Christ is saying he's manifested the name of his God. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gave them me, and they have kept thy word. That's what that's the descriptions of Christ that He will keep us in the name of the Father. We can see it again 
in John 7 in John 17 25 25 and 26 it says O righteous father the world has not known you understood none of them have understood that Haile Selassie is the father of Jesus Christ none of them understood it before Primus gave the testimony right the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it. That's, that's Christ, declaring the name of the Father, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them, to inherit that kingdom. That is the love, to inherit that kingdom, the kingdom, the truth. You see, so... To, to say that his majesty is the father of Jesus Christ. That is directly the testimony and the descriptions of the true Christ. So if you're going to say that his majesty is the father of Jesus Christ. You're going to also have to acknowledge where that testimony comes from. Because the word has made it this way. That, that the father must receive his glory as God, Haile Selassie the first, must be worshipped as God. But you also have to acknowledge Christ, and what we and what and the reason why you have to acknowledge that Primus Saint Croix is the Christ, because when you acknowledge Primus is the Christ, that means that you're gonna have to accept the gospel, the blood. His blood is what saves us. It's the gospel. You see, so if you don't acknowledge Primus St. Croix is a Christ, then that means that the people are going to continue following their Roman idolatry teachings and their polytheistic teachings and their pagan teachings and their incorrect supernatural and superstitious false teachings. You see, you, in, in order to inherit the kingdom and in order to have the truth about the Father, Again, it's the fullness, not only his government, but also the spiritual understanding. You have to have both. You see, and, 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 and that spiritual understanding only Christ can give unto you. So it's necessary to accept the gospel. You know, certain people want to say that his majesty is the father, but they want to make up their own gospel. And they don't want to acknowledge Primus as the Christ. You can't do that. You see, they're, they're bastardizing the message. See, so you can't pick apart this gospel. You have to take everything. You can't just take the parts that you like. You're going to have to take the whole entire thing. You see, and, and, and His Majesty, you know, the Bible, the God of the Bible and His Majesty, when He said that He follows Christ, that, that means He accepts. You, you must accept Christ. You must accept the gospel. The Bible says that you have to, you know, accept Christ. He is the Messiah, the teacher. of. He's the one worthy. No, no other person can declare God, only Christ. He's the only one who's going to give you the truth about the Father, about God. So you have to acknowledge His majesty and His messenger. So... In John chapter 5, verse 43, Christ said, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another man shall come in his own name, him you will receive. So Christ has come in the name of his Father. Primus is the one who has come preaching in the name of the Father, that Haile Selassie is the Father of Jesus Christ. Primus is the one who has declared that. So that means that we're going to have to accept, you know, His Majesty as the Father and Primus St. Croix as the Son. That's the gospel. That's what it means when it says, To him who overcomes, Christ will allow you to sit in His throne just as He has overcome and, has, and it sits in His Father's throne. That is the kingdom. Okay, so these things, these things are very important and we must take it very seriously, okay? Haile Selassie I is the father of Jesus Christ. That is the testimony of Primus St. Croix. No one else, nobody else labeled his majesty as the father of Christ. That's Primus St. Croix's testimony, okay? And when we look in the scriptures, 
we can see that His Majesty, that Primus gave a true testimony that His Majesty is in fact the Father of Jesus Christ. So let's look at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 14. It says that you keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So a lot of people want to say, oh, Primus is a false Christ. But Primus never called himself to be Christ. You know, and that is a sign of the false Christ. In Matthew 24, it says that many false Christs will come and say that I am Christ. Primus never said that he is Christ. All Primus did was keep us in the name of the Father. All Primus did, as a matter of fact, this, let's just read the descriptions of Christ. So, Christ shall appear until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. So Christ kept us in the name of his of, of this Father. Christ kept us in the name of the Father. He did not speak about himself. He did not preach himself. He did not keep us in his own name. Isn't that what it just said in John 5, 43? I am come in the name of the Father. If another one will come in his own name, him you will receive. Christ did not come in his own name. Primus did not preach himself. You see, Primus preached and Primus' testimony is that Haile Selassie I is the father of Jesus Christ. He wasn't talking about himself. I know Primus personally and I barely know anything about him personally. He does not speak about himself. The only thing Primus is concerned with is the scriptures and declaring the truth that Haile Selassie I is the father of Jesus Christ. That, that is all he talks about. He talks about his majesty and he says that his majesty is the father of Christ. So that's what it says Christ will do. He will show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And Haile Selassie I is the King of kings and Lord of lords. That's an historical fact. That's a fact that he holds these titles. You see, this testimony of Rastafari is the only religion on earth that is actually founded upon a fact. That's not an opinion. That's not a myth. That's not a legend. That's not an idol. Haile Selassie is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That is a fact. Look at Revelation. Revelation 19. Right? And the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is the Father. The only God. The God of Jesus Christ. Revelation 19. Verse 11. It says, And I saw heaven open, which is the understanding. And behold, a white horse. And him that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Which is now the gospel. The truth. Warring against the falsehood and the purity of it. Which is the white horse. Faithful and True. His eyes was as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So don't ask about where does it say Haile Selassie in the Bible. It says he had a name that no man knew but he himself. So God's name and the revelation, right, which is, which is again what it said that, you know, that you may be blessed with the knowledge and the wisdom and, and in the revelation of him, this revelation, his name is not written in the scriptures because he, he will declare it. Only he knows the name. He will declare that name. And you will know, one, and you will know that name when he establishes his kingdom on earth as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, which His Majesty did on November the 2nd, 1930, when he said that his name is Haile Selassie I which means the first power of the Holy Trinity. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, which is a testimony, because the blood of Christ is what saves you. So His Majesty's whole government is the testimony of Christ. He's the one who Christ is talking about. He's the God of Christ. Haile Selassie I 
is who Jesus Christ praises and, and who the whole Bible is talking about. His name is called the Word of God. And armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed with fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the wine prince of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. So it's, it's the Almighty that the scriptures is describing right here. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So that's his majesty, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the only person in history to hold those titles, and that's an historical fact. No other Ethiopian king had those titles. No other leader had those titles. We can say, well, Ramses of Egypt had them titles, which he didn't. We can say uh, Jesus, the idol from 2,000 years ago, had those titles, which he didn't. Because the entire description of Jesus in the Bible is the descriptions of a preacher with 12 disciples going around preaching to people. It says nothing in the Bible about Jesus establishing the government and sitting on a throne as a ruler and having administrators and setting up governmental policies and living the life of a king. There is not a single reference or scripture that describes Jesus Christ as an actual king. The reason why Jesus Christ is the king of the Jews is it is talking about the spiritual understanding. He is the king of the gospel. He is the ruler. He is the one that you must go to when it comes to the spiritual understanding. He is the Messiah. That's what it means by the king of the Jews. He's not an actual king. Jesus is an actual preacher, a high priest. Okay, God is an actual king. Haile Selassie I is an actual king. He is actually the king of kings and the lord of lords. So when we look at Isaiah 43, from verse 8 it says, Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and deaf that have ears. Meaning those who don't have the truth and who want to know the truth. Not those who want to fight against the truth. But we want to speak to those who want to know the truth. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this? And show us former things. Who can show us the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Remember what it says in the first Timothy 6 that Christ is going to show in his times who is the blessed and only potentate the king of kings and lord of lords who's going to who can show this only Christ can do it you see and that, and 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 that's what makes primus Christ because n no one else was showing it correctly no one no one else kept this in the name of the father no one else was declaring the word correctly that is the job and the descriptions of Jesus Christ. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is the truth. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant who I, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Before Haile Selassie Established his government on November the 2nd, 19th. There was no person with the titles King of Kings and Lord of Lords. No record of any government on the planet with those titles. There was no God before him because those are the titles of God. And there shall be none after him. It says, I even I am the Lord and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared, I have saved, I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Yes, before the day was, I am He, and there is none that can deliver out of my hands. Before the day was, He's God. You see, so God did not just start being God on November the 2nd, 1930. Haile Selassie did not 
become God when he was born on July 23rd, 1892. He always was God before the revelation. Because God is a spirit. You see, it said in 1 Timothy 3.16, it said God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. So you see him in the flesh. The flesh is the revelation. He was manifested in the flesh. He revealed himself to the world. And he's justified in the spirit, which means that he is the eternal spirit. He is the super soul. He is the creator of the universe. Before the day was, before the revelation took place, he was God. And after, you know, because his majesty said that he's mortal and he will be replaced because he did not come here to put on a magic show. He did not come here to perform supernatural uh, miracles that the Romans and uh, the Romans have the people believing in idolatry and the whole world is covered in paganism but he didn't come to do that because that doesn't how does that help you that doesn't help anyone that doesn't save the world him putting on a magic show so he came to show you and teach you you know he came to he came in line with the continuum of life to show us as human beings how to conduct ourselves, how to save ourselves, what we must do to please God, what we must do to save ourselves and to save the world. So he came to give the message to show us how to live, how to, how to eat properly, how to work hard, how to, uh, what is the right principles of God? How should we be looking at these spiritual forces and how to conduct ourselves and how to govern ourselves and how what is the best way what is the best policies and and to debunk false policies that that cripple the world like uh, colonialism and racism and uh, you know the oppression and the greed and the evil and the lust that 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 men are filled with that only uh, hold us back and destroy humanity. His Majesty came to show us what we must do to save ourselves and to set things up correctly. Okay, so him living in eternal in the flesh is not what the Bible is talking about. He is forever because his spiritual understanding, the spiritual kingdom that Christ came to establish that spirituality and that gospel and that blood is forever. That is how Haile Selassie I is eternal. It's the word. It's the gospel that is eternal. It says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sakes I have, brought, I have sent you to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. So, He will bring down the false testimonies. He will bring down, and that's why He came, is to show us again the truth and how we must conduct ourselves and to bring down the falsehood and the wrong teachings and the wrong version of spirituality that we have been under for so long. So all of the different rosters and the entire religious world have given their testimony, but none of them gave it correctly. It was Primus St. Croy who got it right. It was Primus who kept us in the name of the Father. Primus St. Croy is not God. He's not right about everything. He did not create the universe. He is not the Almighty. Okay, he is a man, he is a preacher, but he is correct when it comes to the scriptures because he declared his majesty as the father of Christ. He understood the scriptures and understood the parable and the mystery. He got that correct. For 6,000 years, the religious world has been given their theories on the parables and it has all been wrong. For all of these years, the Rastas have been given their testimonies and their ideas about who Haile Selassie is and, and their concepts of God, and it was all wrong. It was Primus St. Croix who got it right. 
and his testimony is that Haile Selassie I is the father of Jesus Christ, and we lift up the son as the mediator between God and man. So let us worship his majesty through the son, Jesus Christ, Prime of St. Croix. Blessed be Jah, Rastafari.